seis, son las seis, y magnífico, muy buenas tardes, todavía hay luz, still light, I'm not quite at buenas noches yet, but we're almost there. Buenas tardes a todos, y espero que ustedes estén bien, I hope you guys are well. Uh, bien, a uh, lo que vamos a hacer esta noche, what we're going to do tonight, is um, see if you had any questions about our video in question and our little notes. So I am going to show you the los apuntes, the notes that I sent about the listening video, the story video. Aquí sí, la mudanza. Yeah, moving your household, moving your residence is mudarse como verbo, mudarse. Es un verbo reflexivo. No se puede usar moverse. You cannot use moverse for moving your household. That's for this, you know, moverse. Me muevo las manos. I move my hands. Yeah, ¿sí? Pero uh, mudarse. Y el sustantivo, the noun, es la mudanza. ¿sí? Moving your household. Ok. Y aquí tenemos el, uh, las palabras de vocabulario. Um, I do want to, before we just take a quick look through the vocab to see if you had any questions. This link I gave you, um, because this lady is from Spain, she uses quite a lot, presente perfecto, yeah, and uh, the little down and dirty on that is that, of course, there are all these tenses, you know, this is the tough thing with Spanish, that we have different tenses to talk about the past, actually, we have some, but not all of these in English, some. But uh, this thing, uh, uh, this particular structure of presente perfecto is one way that is very popular in Spain of talking about the near past. And it's also the have you ever done it structure. Yeah. So when Spaniards talk about something that happened just today, Uh, they often use this. He uh, llamado a a mi mejor amiga hoy. I've called. I have called my best friend today. And if I just did it today, this is their preferred past tense. So you'll hear her using this a lot, and that means. Uh, and actually, it's an easy past tense to use because you conjugate. Not a whole bunch of preterites and irregular. Well, there are some irregulars, but you just conjugate haber and then you use the past participle. So, right. eh, for, for yo, tú, or as for tú, a for el, e, a usted, hemos, uh, habéis, if you're uh, in Spain for the you guys form, right? And an, plus one of these ado, ido verbs. So, I did give you a link to see what that sounds like if some of you found that a little bit confusing. Um, this is very well known also in Latin America. It is used, but it's not as favored for talking about the recent past as it is in uh, um, as it is in Spain, used a lot in Spain. Okay. Um, so in place of what you see on the screen there, Uh, he hablado, he comido, he comprado, he entendido. Uh, they'll just, in Latin America, use plano pretérito in all likelihood. Okay. But just so you know. Sí, sí, Susana. Um, I'm just wondering if anybody else is having the, the same problem that I am, is that your slides are not in focus. Oh. Is, is everybody else okay? Is it just my computer? I'm okay. I'm okay. This oh. one looks more clear. Uh, it, it got clear and then it got uh, uh, out of focus. So maybe it, it zoomed must in and out. Clear. Ooh. No, it's out of focus. And, and I know it did an update uh, yeah. today. So it's probably so I don't, me. That's I don't know. No, it was That's mine better. too. That's better. <laughs> Is it better? See? It's better for me. It's clear here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Perfect. Okay. And it was clear. The main one is clear for me. The ones off to the side are a little hard to read, but uh, oh yes. yeah. yeah. Oh, the what the little thumbnails on the side. Oh, those are tiny. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Okay. Those have to be done one by one. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So, uh, para que sepan, just so you know, that link is still there. Uh, but this wound up having a lot of vocabulary in it. So you had a bunch of screens with little things. And a lot of them I thought you would get probably because in some cases, like with cazuelas, she showed you ollas and cazuelas. Uh, and the only difference between olla pot and cazuela, which is also a pot as cazuela is kind of a casserole pot. Yeah, big difference. You know. Um, Marilyn? Si. Uh, the question in regards to uh, the verbs that we just looked at, the past parts of all of them, uh -huh. is edo, uh, edo for ear. Is that commonly used if, if uh, tu has edo? Tu has edo? You would hear that Aquí, ido, yeah. Uh, you would hear that a lot in Spain. You would hear it much less frequently in Latin America. So where you hear this a lot in Latin America is in formal writing. And secondly, the have you ever mm -hmm. kind of context, like, uh, which is kind of specific when somebody doesn't know uh, you know, they want or they want to know if you have ever done something or if it's just like totally you don't know anything about it. So, um, por ejemplo, um, has viajado, has viajado a Chile. Have you traveled to Chile? And that's the have you ever context. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So. In Latin America, it. Has viajado a Chile, that would be a normal thing of somebody doesn't know if you've ever done that before, you know, have you ever, okay? But um, you won't hear the has ido outside of that context in Latin America that much unless it's some kind of a formal writing thing. But if, so if you were to say, uh, has ido a Chile to someone in Spain, that would be correct. Sí. Uh, yes, it was. Yes, sí. Alguna vez, often, often paired with the little phrase, alguna vez, okay. at some time. Mm -hmm. Alguna vez has viajado a Chile, has viajado al Canadá, etc. Alguna vez has viajado. Yeah. Uh, but this is not as common in everyday conversation, as common as it is in Spain, but super, super uh, common there. Okay. A ver, bueno. Entonces, uh, mucho vocabulario. A lot of this is not too tough. The one, um, I'm just going to focus on a couple things that were a little tough out of this list. Me daba mucha pereza. It was boring me. It was making me lazy. This is an odd use of dar, which is kind of like gustar. Yeah, gave me. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it bores me. It makes me lazy. It makes me not want to do it. Me daba mucha pereza. Okay. Uh, that one was kind of a tough one on the list. Um, uh and this was maybe a tough one, but it doesn't really get in the way of your understanding the big picture. Um, uh, ba, 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 ¿Qué más? ¿Qué más? Uh, ah, uh -huh. Creo que bastante obvio, bastante obvio. Uh, bien. Uh, this, is the only, ooh, this is the only one that sometimes confuses people. People say, why do we have a verb colocar? Just because they it's a synonym for poner. You use it just like you use poner. There's no real difference. It means you're putting something in a specific spot, a certain place. Just like with poner. That's it. But it's it, the equivalent uh, as uh, same, same. Comeme. Uh, same thing as poner. Si? ¿Sí? Bien. Uh, Bueno, a ver. Um, do we do we need to go through a little walkthrough with this video or no? 
from? Sure. Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, See? Yes. yes please. Okay. Okay. Vale. And I'm going to leave the uh, subtitles on, and this will be kind of quick unless you stop me. So if you've got a, a screaming question of, oh my gosh, I didn't get this part at all, uh, 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 yell out and, and don't just put the little mechanical hand up because I may not see it. I'm looking at a bunch of things. Uh, so don't be afraid to interrupt. Um, I, I have to say the vocabulary again really helped um, for this. Get an understanding. Yeah, because yeah. she used a lot of, I don't know, I'll call them colloquialisms where the words individually means mean something and then when they put them together it's something else and yeah yeah i mean so, that that's the tough part or one of the many tough parts about learning another language yeah but now i would guess together with that little vocabulary slide set you could probably follow the general ideas mm -hmm. 67 percent Probably even maybe up to 70, you think? See? Yes. 70%? At least a general idea? Not translating, but the big ideas she was mm -hmm. getting across, right? Okay, so let's do a quick uh, roll through. And and here it, she starts off with the have you ever context. Have you ever? If you've ever, see, alguna vez is at some time. And it's it precedes the have you ever with this thing here. Okay. If te has mudado, ya sabes lo estresante que puede ser. No. Uh, if at any time you've ever moved, you've ever moved. Ya te has mudado. Si, si alguna vez ya te has mudado. Uh, you already know. You already, ya sabes. You already know. You already know how stressful. Estresante. Lo estresante. How stressful. How stressful it can be normally. Normalmente una mudanza dura. A, a, how, how stressful a move can be. Ya, no sé, dos días, tres días. Una... Uh, you know, two-day move, three-day move. Semana, como mucho. A, a week's move. Yeah, a week's worth of work. Pero la mía está durando. La mía, mine. And what does mine mean? Her move. Her move. Her move. I move. move. It's referring back to that uh, noun, mudanza. La mía, mine, meaning my move. Pues casi cinco meses. Cinco meses de... <laughs> my move went on and on for... Five months. Five months. Five Five months. months. Five ah, months. sí. A ver, sí. Mudanza. No puedo más. I can't take it anymore. <laughs> no puedo más. I can't more. But this is the phrase people use when they say, I've had it. <laughs> I can't. I can't take it anymore. And what sense does it make in English to say, I can't take it anymore? <laughs> That's devoid of English. That's really devoid of me. I can't take it anymore. Meaning I can't handle it. I can't put up with it. Yeah. No puedo más. Okay. Por si no lo sabes, yo antes vivía en Trieste. En una... And in case you didn't know before, I was living in Trieste, que está en Italia. She was living in Italy. See? ¿Sí? Vivía. I used to live. I was living. I was living there. La ciudad del norte de Italia. In the north y of ahora Italy. Hace Meses. And, and now, five months ago, Me he mudado a España. He... Uh, I've moved to Spain, and you would think, well, five months, that's not very recent, really. <laughs> but she's talking about in the scope of this year that we're in. So it's still okay for her to say, see, me he mudado, even though it's not really recent past. So five months ago, I moved to Spain. Vuelto a mi país de origen. I've, ahora, I've come back to my country of origin. Ahora vivo en Cádiz, en Andalucía. Antes... Uh, but I live in Cádiz. Cádiz está muy, 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 muy al sur. Cádiz is way down southern tip, way uh, about as far south as you can get outside of Gibraltar <laughs> is Cádiz. Okay. 
antes de esto ya había hecho otras mudanzas, pero siempre... And I've done... Oh, I had done. Ya había hecho otras mudanzas. I had made other moves. I had done other moves. Siempre habían sido mudanzas dentro de la misma ciudad. But they had always been moves within the same city, you know, from one neighborhood to another neighborhood, not to a whole different country, yeah? O por lo menos dentro del mismo país. Or at least within the same country. Pero esta vez ha sido una mudanza internacional. But this time it was an international move. Y la verdad es que está siendo una experiencia abrumadora. Ah, and the truth is it has been an overwhelming experience. Okay? Abrumadora just means overwhelming, uh, uh, yeah, exhausting. Me siento abrumada. Bueno. Me siento abrumada. I feel wiped out. <laughs> abrumadora. I am, I am overcome. I am overwhelmed. La mudanza ha durado cinco meses, pero... But, but the, the move has lasted. Durar is to last, to take a certain amount of time for something to happen. It has lasted for five months. En realidad, no ha durado cinco meses. But really, it hasn't taken... It hasn't really lasted five months. <laughs> Me refiero a que hace cinco meses tuve que hacer todas las cajas. So, me refiero is a way of saying, I mean. Yeah. Me refiero. Sí. Um, um, sometimes, my, you know, if my friends didn't understand something I would say to them, ¿A qué te refieres? What do you mean? ¿A qué te refieres? What do you mean? What are you talking about? See, ¿Sí? uh, me refiero. I mean this whole thing of being packed up. Sí, hacer las cajas, las cajas or, or unpacking. Meter toda mi vida en cajas. Dejé todo en un almacén. En... I left everything in storage. Almacén can be a warehouse. If you work in a business, an almacén will be a warehouse wherever you stockpile your your uh, goods to ship out, yeah? Uh, but in this case, she's talking about a storage room. En Italia, y vine a España a buscar piso. And I came to Spain to look for an apartment, and piso is a term commonly used for apartment. In Mexico, you'll hear apartamento or even departamento, departamento uh, for uh, apartment. But notice, look for is just busca or busco. See, ¿sí? uh, vine a buscar. I came to look for. And there's no for. Yeah. When you look up, as in you search something out, like in the dictionary, or you look for something, it's just buscar. Just buscar, okay? No, no little preposición. No hay ninguna preposición. So, came to look for an apartment. Es que tardé en uh, the truth is that I took quite a while. Tardar, again, talks about taking a while to do something. I took quite a while un piso. to find an apartment. Y después... No me decidía, me daba mucha pereza. Uh, and after a, while, after a while, I was too lazy to do anything else. Yeah, I didn't feel like it, yeah. Decirle a la empresa de mudanzas de Italia <laughs> que trajeran las cosas aquí. ¿Y por qué? Bueno, pues porque en estos últimos cinco meses he vivido solo con las cosas que traje en una maleta y he sido muy feliz. Eh, eh, ah, uh, I haven't been really conscientious about getting all those boxes unpacked or moved out from Italy because in the last five months, I've just been living with the stuff, the things that I brought, que traje, that I brought in a suit suitcase. That doesn't seem possible. And I've been a happy person. <laughs> he sido muy feliz. I have been a happy person. Not I felt happy. Notice, not I felt happy. I have been a happy person existing that way. Mm -hmm. He sido muy feliz. Feliz. Me he dado cuenta de que de verdad 
no necesito tantas cosas. And I realized I I have come to see the light that I don't need all this. I don't need so much stuff. Para vivir, pero to bueno, live. la verdad es que ya no me quedaba otra. Ya no me queda otra. Ya no me quedaba otra. And here is one of the little set phrases, yeah. No me quedaba otra is like saying no other choice. I had no other way out. I had no other alternative. This is, you know, I just had to suck it up and do this. Yeah. Okay. So nothing get to, to it. Left, nothing to be left with. Is that from Kedar? Yeah. No me quedaba otra. Uh, I think in a way, if we stuck another word at the end of that, it would make more sense. Ya, uh, ya no me quedaba otra alternativa. Mm -hmm. sí. Sí. If I tagged on the word alternativa, you would know what that otra is talking about. O opción. Yeah. No me queda, uh, ya no sí. me quedaba otra opción. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, so if we added a little word on, it would be, oh, yeah, now I know what you mean. But they shorten it to just that. Uh, ya no me queda. Abierto. Sí, bien. Ok. No me queda otra. Ya tengo que afrontar esta situación. Uh, tengo que afrontar. I've got to face up to. Yeah, I've got to tackle. I've got to face up to this situation. No queda otra. Tengo que empezar a abrir las cajas. I've got to begin to open these boxes. Porque ya me he dado cuenta de que estaba empezando a comprar muchas cosas. Ah, oh, I realized that I started to buy a lot of stuff. Dobles, ¿no? Muchas Doubles. I had to buy a lot of things. I was doubling. I already had that thing. Cosas repetidas. Por ejemplo, cosas de la cocina... Ollas, cazuelas. Yeah, pots and pans. I already had it and I was buying double stuff when I had no need to do that. So that means it's time to unpack the boxes because that stuff exists in those boxes, yeah? Eh, sí. No sé, una cosa tan simple como un pelapatatas bueno de calidad. <laughs> a, a thing as simple as a potato peeler. Mm -hmm. And notice how they talk about, ¿cómo se dice potato peeler? Pela patatas. Yeah. Peels potato, yeah, pela patata, sí, pela patata. They put pelar, which means to peel, together with patatas, pela pala, pelatas. Okay, uh, and now it becomes a noun, pela pata, patatas. Vale, yo ya lo tenía en mis cajas. Which I already had in my boxes. Pero empiezo a necesitarlo y se empezaba But a now I need, I started to need this stuff. La, la necesidad de comprar muchas cosas que and I was starting to feel the need of you know uh, buying lots of things that I already have que ya tengo. tengo así que hoy es el día ayer llegaron todas las cajas and, uh, and so now is the time and and uh, yesterday all the boxes arrived yeah ayer llegaron todas las cajas all the boxes arrived hoy, yesterday vamos a ver and Today we're going to open them up. Para llevar a cabo este proceso, tengo... Uh, llevar a cabo is another great uh, combination of words. Realizar una acción o una actividad, to carry something out. It means you're getting something done. Llevar a cabo. It means you're taking it to its end point. You're finishing off that. You're checking it off the list. You're accomplishing something. Llevar a cabo. Okay. I have two options. Ah, por un lado. Here's another little thing. Ah, one hand and the other hand. They don't use the word hand. It's por un lado, por otro lado. Okay. So, on the one hand, uh, I can choose not to stress myself out. Con calma. And, and be very chill about this. Todas las cosas, todos los objetos de las cajas, poco a poco. Uh, uh, oh, I can choose, number one, por un lado, take things out, poco a poco. Little by little. Little by little, okay, bit by bit. Okay, uh, not stress out, just look for that one little item. Pero de esta forma, mi casa va a estar 
hecha un desastre y llena de cajas durante mucho tiempo. But, but if I do that, I'm still going to have a lot of boxes for a long time, right? Uh, it, it'll be a disaster. The house will be a disaster because I will still be full of boxes because I'll only be taking out little things here and there. Okay. Por otro lado, On the other hand, hacerlo lo antes posible. do it as soon as possible. As soon as possible. Lo antes posible is a great another chunk of words. Lo antes posible, as soon as possible, as quickly as possible. Lo antes posible. The before mm. possible. It makes yes. no sense. That's why you can't translate it. Yeah, the before possible. Yeah, huh? No. Lo antes posible means as soon as you can, as soon as possible. Con el estrés. Y and with the stress that that brings along with it, el trabajo que eso and all the work it brings along with it. ¿Tú qué piensas? ¿Qué opción me recomiendas? ¿Tú cómo lo harías? Yo estoy muy contenta de haberme mudado a España porque tenía muchas ganas, pero la verdad. Es and I really wanted to move back home, so that part of it is good. Está siendo un proceso muy largo, <laughs> muy lento. Yeah. So, how has the process of coming back home been? It's been long, lento, slow, uh, tedioso, tedious, right? Uh, a veces un poquito difícil. And sometimes a little hard? Esto? Pues porque para volver a España y para instalarme en España... And I say this because coming back to Spain to... Settle in, instalarme means setting up house, settling in, to uh, settle in. Vale, para instalarme, o sea, empezar a vivir aquí de manera estable, estoy teniendo que hacer muchísimo papeleo. papeleo. I've, oh, in order to set up house, to literally get myself installed, right? But we would say to settle in, I had to do a lot of... Paperwork. Paperwork. There was a big paper trail. Uh, okay. Uh, es una forma coloquial de decir burocracia, ¿vale? Mucho. Uh, as, uh, yeah. Uh, pap, uh, papaleo is a, uh, uh, a little term that means just going through all... Oh, red tape. Oh, okay. See. Think of it. Papaleo, you, it looks almost like papel, yeah? But think of it as all the red tape, yeah? You got all the red tape of moving back to a different country. Documentos, muchos papeles. Documents, papers. Y la verdad es que en este proceso me estoy sintiendo un poco extranjera. And uh, the truth is, going through this process, I feel, I'm now feeling a bit like actually a foreigner in my own country. Yeah. All the rigmarole, papalero, all the rigmarole paperwork. En mi país. Y es la parte más fea. Y... Uh, it is the ugliest part. This thing of using this word feo or fea is really, uy, es popular usar la palabra fea o feo. Um, We wouldn't really say ugly in this context. You know, we might say annoying, messy, uh, nasty. And feo is a word that comes up uh, both sides of the Atlantic a lot when you have to do something disagreeable or when a situation is disagreeable. Okay, so ugly. Y más difícil de la mudanza. Además, por si eso fuera poco, encontrar piso en Cádiz ha sido una auténtica odisea. Ah, finding a uh, un piso, finding an apartment in Cádiz has been an odyssey. Mm -hmm. An odyssey. She's referring to wow, that's very poetic. She's referring Homer. to, yeah, a Homer, <laughs> uh, you know, the legendary warrior uh, who who traveled for years to get home from the wars. Uh, uh, okay. 
Uh, from, um, okay, bien. Ha sido muy, muy, muy difícil. Muy difícil, de verdad. Yo he tenido la suerte de poder elegir la ciudad en la que quiero vivir. Porque And, you know, I was lucky to be able to choose the city I wanted to come to. Me encanta, me encanta por muchos motivos. So, ah, ah, por muchos motivos. I love it for many reasons. Motivos is a way of saying reasons. There are many reasons I love Cádiz. Y es una foto de Cádiz. Es muy bonito. Por la playa y el clima que tiene. Y la And que... she loves it for the beach. She loves it for the weather. Gente que es muy simpática también. And really nice people. Pero tiene un problema. Ah, tiene... But it, there's a problem with living in this beautiful, beach, friendly, good weather city. Un inconveniente esta ciudad. Y es que es una ciudad turística. Ah, the problem is that it's a, a tourist town. Entonces es muy difícil encontrar un piso en alquiler. Ah, uh, so because it's a tourist town, it's hard to find a place to rent, uh, an apartment to rent. Para todo el año. For the whole year. And we can kind of relate to this because, you know, Uh, people come back here for fall and winter, and it can be kind of a tourist town here as well, in some sense. Porque los propietarios de los pisos... The property owners of the apartments... Y los apartamentos prefieren alquilar por temporadas cortas... They prefer to rent out short term. Yeah, temporadas cortas means for a short season. They would rather do a short season rental Con alquileres turísticos, with tourist renters ganan mucho más dinero. because they get a lot more money that way. Okay, the whole reason a lot of people here don't like Airbnb is becoming kind of the dirty word, right? De esa forma hacen el agosto, que es lo que decimos en España, ¿no? Hacer ah, el hacer el agosto. I don't think I've heard this in Latin America. Hacer el agosto, make August. Um, I guess like, you know, make hay while the sun shines, that kind of idea. Yeah, hacer el agosto, take advantage of, of a temporary situation to make money. Agosto es aprovechar una situación, take, ¿no? Para sacarle todo el dinero To get posible. the most money out, you take advantage of the situation. Difícil. It has Por been very hard. Después de un tiempo buscando, encontramos este piso que me encanta, me gusta muchísimo. Por su ubicación. Oh, and she loves this for its location. Ubicación is a word they like a lot on both sides of the Atlantic. Ubicación is location. Okay, ubicación. Está en un barrio que me encanta. Está en and un barrio que se encuentra I love the neighborhood. de la playa y también Near the beach. bastante cerca del centro. And Así it's que pretty close to the downtown area. Estoy muy contenta. So Ahora I'm very happy. Toda la casa llena de cajas. So now I've got the whole house full of boxes. Y he intentado dejar una esquina. ¿Veis? Aquí un trozo. Bueno, ahora tengo... And she's telling you, please ignore the place where I hang my laundry. Yeah. I, I tried to save this little place to do my uh, my tenderle, my computer work. Yeah. I have tried. He intentado dejar. I have tried to leave this space open so people don't say, see the dirty boxes in my house. I would love for her to see my house. Okay, bien, sí. Esa esquina libre de cajas. The, this corner is free of boxes. Para dar mi clase online. Para to give my online classes. No se asusten, no piensen. So that my students don't get scared from seeing all these boxes behind me, okay? <laughs> que vivo eh, inundada. Por... I, 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 live, I live flooded with boxes, yeah, see. Sí. In my house, in mi casa, eh, es equipo de, de acampar, equipo de, de uh, ay, equipo de estar, eh, de, de hacer deporte. With me, it's a small of sports equipment that is stacked behind me that you guys, thank God, don't see. Okay. Las cajas, ¿vale? Pero todo lo demás está lleno de cosas. Y ahora voy... Everything, uh, yeah. So that little space is free, but everything else is full of junk. Yeah, full of boxes. Voy a tener que pensar muy bien dónde quiero colocar las So cosas. I've had to think hard Porque about where to place este all the things. Es más grande que el que tenía... Although el... this apartment is bigger Italia, than what I had in Italy. Está distribuido de una manera muy diferente. Entonces, It's voy a tener laid out que in a different way. 
para colocar todo y encontrar un lugar para cada una And de I want to find a place este piso también ha sido un poco difícil porque for all my stuff. teníamos algunas exigencias, algunos requisitos que And oh, we've had some requirements, requisito, you know, uh, requisites, we've had requirements. We had things we wanted on our checklist when we picked out an apartment, requisitos, requirements. Que el piso cumpliera. Ejemplo, well, uh, we wanted the potential apartment sites to fulfill uh, certain requirements that we had. Cumpliera means to fulfill. We wanted them to fulfill these requirements when we were apartment hunting. Ejemplo, antes en Italia vivíamos en una casa que solo tenía una habitación. Y esta... uh, before, when we lived in Italy, we only had... One bedroom. Esta de aquí tiene tres habitaciones. Ah, Atención. tres. Here we have three. Vale, porque en España cuando decimos habitaciones nos referimos a los dormitorios, ¿vale? A los dormitorios. So she's talking about bedrooms. In that part you probably got. Para dormir, ¿sí? Entonces, si ves un anuncio de un apartamento, if you see an ad for an apartment. And they say que tiene habitación. una habitación, un dormitorio para dormir, pero además tiene cocina, pues tiene un salón, ¿vale? Nosotros no contamos, no tenemos en cuenta la cocina y el salón cuando hablamos de las habitaciones. Por eso yo cuando buscaba el piso pensaba, vale, ¿qué quiero? Pues quiero un piso que tenga tres habitaciones. Ah, and now she uses a little bit of a fun thing with subjunctive. Necesito un piso que tenga tres habitaciones. So the little thing I want you to notice about this is now she's thinking back to, oh, when we were apartment hunting, I need an apartment that has this. And she does not know if it exists yet. When you're in the process of apartment hunting, you don't know if That apartment is out there on the market right now. And that's why she's got, necesito un piso que tenga tres habitaciones. I need an, apart uh, an apartment that may have three bedrooms, okay? And because you don't know if there's a three-bedroom available out there right now, that's why that verb is que tenga. It is the hard subjunctive that means you're looking for something and you don't know if it exists. That que tenga is there because there may be nothing that's a three bedroom. They all may be oneers. They may be one and two bedrooms, but no three bedrooms. Okay. And that que tenga has to be there because you don't know if that place exists. It's talking about, a hypothetical place. Dos o tres habitaciones, porque para mí es importante tener una habitación para dormir, una habitación place para to sleep, trabajar, place y to una work, habitación pues para invitados, porque a mí me gusta mucho que venga mi room for guests. a visitarme. Entonces yo pensaba, un piso que tenga tres habitaciones, un piso que esté cerca de la playa. Again, oh, un piso que esté cerca de la playa. Uh, An apartment that might be near the beach because beach. maybe there's nothing close to the beach that's on the market right now. That's why it's que esté instead of que está. Okay? Por eso, that's why. Y que no sea muy caro. And that is, is not so expensive. <laughs> okay. Because, of course, what you want is always going to be more expensive than Please, what you wanted caso, to pay. He usado el subjuntivo. He usado el presente de subjuntivo. And she talks about why she's a subjunctive. Que tenga tres habitaciones, que esté cerca de la casa, de la playa. ¿Por qué he usado el subjuntivo? Pues porque no estaba hablando de un piso específico. We're no not talking about any... Un piso que conozco, un piso que sé que existe. ¿no? Yeah, you don't know if it exists. Caso, That's why they use subjunctive here. Un piso que tiene tres habitaciones. ¿Veis? Yo hablaba de un piso cualquiera, ¿vale? I'm talking cumpla... about any old apartment. Yeah, Eso cualquiera es any old. Yo ahora mismo tengo un poco un dilema porque, mirad. I've got a little dilemma here. 
mirad qué cantidad de cosas aquí, una cama, bueno. ¿Y cuál es mi dilema? Bueno, yo no sé cuánto tiempo voy a vivir en este apartamento. I don't, oh, my dilemma is I don't know how long I'm going to be living in this apartment. En este piso, porque la verdad es que me gustaría encontrar algo más eh, definitivo. Ah, uh, yeah, the truth is I'd like to find something more definite, more permanent. No sé muy bien cuánto tiempo voy a estar aquí en este piso. And pero so I don't know how long I'll be here. Supongo que estaré aquí como mucho un año, dos años. Entonces... Yeah, como mucho es like... Like around a year, yeah. Como mucho un año, like around a year. No sé si quiero sacar todo de las cajas. I don't know if I want to take everything out of the boxes. If I'm only here a year. And then pack them up again? Uh. Because I'm, I'm, I'm living pretty well with the stuff that's out there right now. And I'm not doing, you know, the extra work of unpacking. Platos, los vasos y todo el menaje del hogar. Yeah, all the, de... all the silverware, all the stuff you have in the kitchen, yeah. Plates, glasses, all that stuff you have. Tranquila. Entonces, no sé qué hacer. Puedo dejarlo todo aquí y... Could just leave it all here. Mm -hmm. I can just leave it all here. Sacar... Poco a poco, and take things out little by little cosas que necesite, that I might need. Forma, pierdo una habitación, ¿vale? que but, una... but if I do that, then pierdo una habitación. I lose a bedroom. Mm -hmm. I lose a bedroom. Okay. La habitación que yo tenía pensada para trabajar y ahora estoy trabajando en el salón. Uh, yeah, because this was a space I was planning to work, and now, you know, I'm out in the living room, that one little corner with no boxes. Okay. O también puedo alquilar un guardamuebles. Ah, or I could rent guardamuebles. Guarda, guardar means to keep or to put away, to stash something someplace. Guardamuebles is a storage space. Yeah, uh, storage room. Un trastero y llevar todas las cosas que no necesite ahora mismo. And uh, put the stuff that I don't need right now. Allí, there. pero eso es mm, bastante caro y además... But, you know, that is... Es bastante caro. It's kind of expensive. Además, tengo que volver a transportar todo. <laughs> and, and then I've got to move, transport, yeah? All this stuff from my house. Desde mi casa al trastero. Uf, eso me estresa. And that stresses me. Piensas, ¿qué harías? Wow. ¿Qué, tú, ¿Tú qué harías? You, what would you do? ¿Qué harías? What would you do? Me estoy quejando mucho, pero en realidad estoy contenta. ¿eh? Por ejemplo, estoy muy contenta. I complain a lot, but I'm really very happy. Otra vez. <laughs> oh, libros, she got her books. Mis libros. Porque así os puedo volver a grabar algún video so recomendando libros en español. Video estoy recommending muy books. Estoy muy contenta de tener mis libros y además estoy muy, muy contenta con la ciudad que he elegido. ¿vale? And she says, I'm very happy with the city I have chosen. Me encanta. Y además, uh, eh, yo ya he vivido Gabby's. en diferentes ciudades. I've lived in different estado. cities. Muchos años. I've been a bunch of years y creo que around and around. Ah, uh, me gustaría echar raíces. I'd like to literally throw out some roots. So we would say put down roots. Yeah, I'd like to put some roots down. I'd like to settle down. Echar raíces is literally to throw out roots. So that means settle down and get yourself established and not move. Again. Echar raíces, echar raíces. Las raíces es esa parte de los árboles que That's está. That's the part of a tree. Tierra, a raíz. Las, las raíces. Bueno, it goes pues, underground. Echar raíces, establecerme de manera fija, más duradera. Aquí. Establish myself, you know, for a longer period of time, for a lasting period of time. Duradera, lasting period of time. Aquí. No sé si lo conseguiré. I don't know if I'll get there. Año, volveré a cambiar de idea. Or if I'll change my mind again in about a year. Yo cambio de idea 
continuamente. I change my mind continuously. <laughs> no sé si será porque es Géminis. Tengo una, una estudiante. <laughs> she's speculating if that's because she's a Gemini. Que, que me ha dicho que eso es porque mi signo del zodiaco es Géminis, pero no sé. <laughs> but I don't know if that's true, she says. After being home all that time for so long, thinking about this, if I should take out all the stuff out of the boxes, where I'm going to put the stuff. Hmm. What have I done after all that time? <laughs> Uh, nothing, <laughs> nada, nothing at all, nothing at all. Okay, yay. So, hope that helped a bit. See, yay. Yeah. Thank you. So, uh, just as we in English would use little turns of phrases, you know, they do too. And hopefully, the little vocabulary asked, uh, uh, helped with that. Okay, uh, vamos a hablar. Ah, adelante, adelante, un poquito de la conversación aquí. Desde la edad de 18 años, ¿sí? ¿cuántas veces te has mudado? And I could have changed it, te has mudado to cuántas veces te moviste. Or mudiste, perdón, mudiste, mudaste, perdón, mudaste. Te mudaste. Sí, bueno, sí, Cindy. Just to FYI, my screen is completely blurred. I can't oh. read any of that. Okay, let me try to put it to... Mejor, better? No. no. Not better. Yay. No, no. It's perfect let, here. let me try to do this. Ooh. Let me, I'm, we're going to try the classic of turn it off, turn it on. <laughs> you never know. It may help. It can't hurt. Un poquito mejor. A little better? Oh, no. Must be a no. Let me try go out again. I'll Let me out. try something else. Let me try something else. Una alternativa. <laughs> momentito, momentito. Let's try a different way of doing this. It's a little bit of typing. Sí, me requiere escribir un poquito, pero no es tan difícil. Not so hard. Uh, uy, uh, desde la edad de 18 años, ¿cuántas veces? Uh, te has mudado. Uh, o oh, oh, podemos cambiar esto a uh, cuántas veces te mudaste. Mm -hmm. Either way, you can use that. No importa, does not matter. Either one of those two phrases. Cuántas veces te has mudado. Cuántas veces te mudaste. Bien, los dos. Ah, uh, bueno, a ver. Uh, ooh, and now that I've got that up, let me ask you, ooh, que puedo mover? Can I move this? If I move this, can you see it? See? ¿Sí? Can you still see no, the white no, screen? No, ¿Sí? no, it went no. completely blurry. Okay. Let Where me try this. Better? Mejor? This? No. Cindy, no. Eye doctor. Cindy, I was having the same problem, and I left and came back in, and now everything's clear. No, well, maybe you want to try that. I no, think I what I think uh, what might have happened is that because uh, Zoom didn't update today, there's some little oh, there's some little bug lurking. How many people actually have a bad screen versus a a fine screen. Raise your hand if you got a bad screen, blurry screen. I wonder if you make the font real large, if people could see it better, even no, more. Well, let's give that a go.
Uy, a ver. Uh, as large as I can make that screen. Better or still a big blur? Still a big blur. A little bit. Ooh, okay. Was it better when I typed up the one question? Sí o no? Yeah. Yes. It was better. Sí. Okay. Then let's just go to that. That's okay. Está bien. We do what we have to do. Okay. Mejor, better here? The same. Mm -hmm. See, okay. Desde la, but now, uh, now that I've got this up, I will not be able to see your pictures. So instead, don't raise your hand, just shout out. See, desde la edad de 18 años, ¿cuántas veces te has mudado? How many times have you moved since you were 18? Me mudé, me mudé. Uy, tengo que pensar un poquito. Me mudé desde, uh, desde 18 años. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, wow. siete, wow, ocho, nueve. He, me mudé nueve veces. Wow. En total. Desde wow. la edad de 18 años, sí, entonces... Durante la universidad, tres apartamentos o dormitorios. Tres. Why didn't tres, I... sí. Uh, me mudé wow. a Illinois. Me mudé a otro apartamento en Illinois. Cinco, sí. Me mudé a un condominio en Illinois. Me mudé aquí a... a uh, no, me, perdón, ocho veces, sí. Me, me mudé aquí a, a Arizona y por fin, por fin, en la casa donde, donde vivo ahora, ahorita. Entonces, lo siento, sí, ocho veces. Ocho veces para mí. Para ustedes, ¿quién? Who's got an idea? Um, desde, desde la edad de uh, 18 años hasta hace 23 años, me he mu mudado mucho. Yo no puedo los contar. Ah, no puedo contar. <laughs> Me mudaba mucho es apropiado. That's appropriate because you don't know how many times I moved around a lot. Me mudaba mucho. Perfecto, perfecto. Alguien más? Anybody else? Um, me mudaba. Uh, Uh, dos veces solamente. Uh, wow. Wow. Uh, wow. Wow. Me, me mudada de Irlanda a Chicago y uh, me mudada de Chicago a Phoenix. Okay. See, <laughs> now if you talk about all those little incidents, they will be me mudé. Me mudé. Because, me mudé. yeah. Because now you're talking about a specific time. Me mudé, me mudé a Chicago, me mudé a, a, a las afueras de Chicago, me mudé a Arizona, okay? Así, sí. bien, sí. for each little time, because it's a one instance, right? But if sí. if uh, you're not counting, if you say, I just can't count, then me mudaba is okay, está bien. Vale, bueno, alguien más, somebody else. Uh, me mudaba casi a uh, 12 veces. Wow. Uh, wow. Sí. Now, if you're limiting it to 12, 12, me mudé. Oh, okay. Even me if mudé say... 12 veces. If you make it a definite number of times, me mudé oh. 12 veces. 12 veces, sí. Mm, muchas veces. <laughs> muchas mudanzas. Bien. Bueno, yeah. ¿qué más? If you say casi, does that mean almost or like, is that a way of saying you're not sure? Casi, or? almost. Almost. Yeah. But if you're naming a number of times. Or más o menos. Yeah. Okay. So sí. me mudé de doce veces. Sí. Okay. Bien. Sí. Bien. So is uh, me he mudado cuatro veces? Is that wrong? No. Okay. Me he mudado 
me he mudado sí. cuatro, cuatro veces. Cuatro veces. O lo que sí. sea, tres veces. Sí, sí. perfecto, perfecto. Sí. Both of those are correct. The me he mudado por... just may be more common in Spain. Okay, sí, okay. adelante. Uh, uh, una vez por uh, más educación, dos veces por oportunidades profesionales y una vez por ovulación. Ah, bien, sí. Muchas veces uh, nos mudamos para uh, 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 cuando... Uh, cuando conseguimos un trabajo en otra ciudad. Muy común, ¿sí? Muchas veces tenemos que mudarnos para empezar un nuevo empleo en otra ciudad. Es lógico. Bien. Uh, ¿Hay sí. alguien más? ¿Anybody else? Yo, oh, adelante. Uh, me mudé... Um, Diez veces a uh, um, universidad en Monmouth, Illinois, y uh, dos veces, dos dormitorios, y dos dormitorios a la Universidad de Michigan, de, oh, I forgot, <laughs> este Michigan. Universidad ah, sí, sí, sí. Ypsilanti. Lo conozco so, bien, lo conozco bien, sí. Dos, dos dormitorios allí, I think it means there, y um, apres de um, universidades, um, I return, return to Kansas City, um, seis Casas en Kansas City. Cuatro con mi esposo y... <laughs> okay. Okay, Cinco bien. So, this kind of verb, mudarse, is one you're more likely, but not 100%, because nothing in life is 100%, you're more likely to hear in pretérito, because we're more likely to talk about it in specific instances or a specific number of times. But... Here is where you might want to use it with imperfecto. Me mudaba una y otra vez. Mm. I moved again and yeah. again, mm. meaning you're not being specific. Yeah. And then me mudaba makes sense because of this idea. Una y otra vez es algo vago. It's vague. Sí. Pero es más común usar una forma del pasado más específico como pretérito. Aquí sí, me mudé o me he mudado, ¿sí? Depende. Ok, vale. Otra idea con la, el número de veces. O siguiente, siguiente. Ah, uh, ok. Siguiente. Siguiente, siguiente. Bueno, sí, uh, uh, voy a escribir la próxima pregunta que es, ¿en cuántas uh, ciudades vivías? How many cities did you used to live in? Mm. Ah, interesante. ¿En cuántas ciudades vivías? Yo vivía, por ejemplo, yo vivía, I used to live, yo vivía en como, uh, bueno, que tengo que contar, sí, a uh, uno, dos, tres, a uh, cuatro. Yo vivía en cuatro ciudades. Yo vivía en cuatro ciudades. Bien, y ustedes. You guys. Uh, yo uh, vivía en siete uh, ciudades diferentes. Wow, siete. Sí, sí, ok, sí. vale. ¿Qué más? Who else? Uh, vivía en ocho ciudades. Ocho mm -hmm. ciudades. Wow. Bien. Ok, vale. Yo vivía en siete ciudades. 
Siete ciudades, bien, sí, exacto. Y bueno, ¿alguien más? ¿Anybody else? Sí o no? Yo, yo vivía en tres ciudades. Tres ciudades. Muy razonable, very reasonable. Sí, tres okay. ciudades, bien. Yo, ok, yo, I, I had, um, yo vivía en cuatro, but I had a question. Um, I listed them, you know, Honolulu, Brisbane, Australia, Phoenix, and Pinnacle Peak. And if, are you expected to put any kind of um, Spanish, can you say Honolulu and Brisbane, or you, do you try and put a Spanish accent pronunciation? Ah, on? qué buena pregunta. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Yo lo diría en como, como son. I would say them as they are, but it, it, I would not be a bit surprised if I heard somebody from really anywhere in the Spanish-speaking world say something like this. Yo vivía en, uh, en tres ciudades a uh, uh, Brisbane Brisbane I would not be surprised Brisbane I uh, uh, they do tend to Spanishize mm -hmm. lots of places see uh, uh, Honolulu I would guarantee most Honolulu see si. oh, Honolulu uh, <laughs> see si. uh, Honolulu see si. Oh, no, Lulu. But I think they know there's a ha in there. So, uh, no sé exactamente. Uh, you know, it is the thing of, uh, I had a friend who's, she had a little boy, his, his name was Nelson. And they never called him Nelson. Siempre, sí. Ah, Nelson. Nelson, ¿dónde estás? <laughs> en la escuela. ¿Dónde estás, Nelson? ¿Qué has hecho? What have you done? Uh, sí. Sí. Eso es. Uh, so they do tend to span it. But, you know, depende. it depends. So if you're talking about like a well-known city like London, there is an actual word for that in Spanish. Londres, sí. Uh, for Paris, it will not be Paris, Paris, and in Francais, but Paris in English, Paris, Paris. Bien, sí. Uh, Roma, sí. Uh, Nueva York, Nueva York. Entonces, depende de la ciudad. So I really have to say it depends on the city. If it's really well known, like New York, dirían Nueva York, Nueva York. Yeah, and that's what you will hear. You will hear uh, people saying Miami, not mm. Miami, Miami. Miami. Uh, uh, you'll hear San Francisco, like it would sound in Spanish. Yeah. Entonces, depende de la ciudad. It really kind of depends on the city. But, Así es. but as a gringo, are you kind of expected to do your best and, you know, take it from Miami to Miami? Uh, no, I would do that, Miami, because that's how I would think saying that, speaking Spanish. <laughs> but no, but Nueva York would be kind of the common thing. Would they recognize New York? Maybe I in New York. See, si. okay. they would recognize it for sure. For sure. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a lot of leeway. People know. Okay. Vale. Bueno. Uh, otra idea de cuántas, en cuántas ciudades vivías, how many cities you lived in. Anybody else? Marilyn? Sí. I, I'm going to try something, I, and I'm not sure if this is right. Uh, the question was vivías. Would I be wrong in saying yo he vivido? Uh, in cuatro ciudades, Honolulu, Brooklyn, Kansas City, yo estoy aquí. Ah, he vivido, es okay. correcto decir he vivido en, boom, 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 ciudades, mm -hmm. sí. He vivido en el número, he vivido en tres ciudades, he vivido en cuatro ciudades, sí. He vivido, I have lived, sí. Yes. Sí se puede, yes, you can. Bien. Vale. Bueno. Siguiente, siguiente. Next up. 
Siguiente. Ah, um, sí. Yo, yo he vi, vivido en siete um, ciudades. Nació en Galesburg, Illinois. Y cuando era pequeño niño, mi familia mu, me, nos mudé en Minnesota, Minneapolis. Y cuando era, cuando era, cuando hace, hace tres años, mudé a Kansas City. Ok, entonces, ustedes se mudaron a Minnesota, okay. ¿sí? Sí. Y después se mudaron a... Otra ciudad, ya yeah, otra ciudad, uh, another city already. ¿Sí? ¿Bien? Yeah, sí. Ok, sí. Okay. Uh, de niña, as a kid, as a little girl, de niña, mis padres se mudaron desde Illinois a, a Minnesota y se mudaron otra vez and they moved again a otra ciudad, así, like that. ¿Bien? Ok. Ah, bueno. Adelante. ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál fue? Which one was? ¿Cuál fue la mudanza más difícil de tu vida y por qué? ¿Qué pasó? Uh, you know, you may want to relate why. What happened to make that difficult? La mudanza más difícil de mi vida fue la mudanza desde Chicago aquí a Arizona. Y fue la mudanza más difícil porque pasamos, pasamos como tres días a manejando en un camión, con un camión enorme con mis muebles. Y el día que yo llegué aquí a Arizona, la temperatura uh, estaba uh, a como 122 grados. 122. 122. Sí. A... Uh, uh, el día, el día que yo llegué aquí a Arizona, oh. ¿sí? a la temperatura estaba a 122 grados. Y, y yo pensé, ¿qué hice? What did I do? ¿Qué hice? ¿Por qué me mudé aquí? Ya y me mudé aquí por amor. I moved here for love. Pero ahora la temperatura está a 122 <laughs> grados. Uh, ok. Y ustedes, si ustedes, ¿cuál fue la mudanza más difícil de tu vida? Uh, <laughs> mi mudanza más difícil fue a Omaha, Nebraska. ¿Por qué dos días? Antes, fin de semana, eh, mi esposa y yo planeaba ir ahí y buscar un hogar. La ciudad fue azotada con un gran tornado. Muchos lugares nos encararon sin hogar. No fue un buen momento para buscar casa para nuestros. Como okay. resultado, vivimos por un año en un dormitorio universitario experimental con un pequeño grupo de estudiantes. Se convirtió en una gran experiencia. Ah, bien. Ok. Muy bien, gracias. Bueno. ¿Alguien más? Uh, 
la mudanza más difícil de mi vida uh, fue uh, cuando uh, salí de Irlanda um, a Chicago uh, porque uh, dejó mi familia en Irlanda mm -hmm. y uh, uh, me uh, mudé uh, para Abor. Sí, es difícil dejar, uh, uh, dejar a la familia en otro lugar, especialmente con una familia muy unida, especially with a very close family, sí. ¿sí? Cuando la familia está muy unida, sí. ¿sí? Relaciones muy cercanas. Sí, sí. Uh, entonces es difícil, es difícil dejar a la familia y para, para mudarse a, no sé, al, a algún lugar que está muy lejos. Claro, bueno. Uh, bueno, también, mi mudanza también fue difícil. Uh, fue difícil porque, uh, porque, en eso entonces, at that time, sí, uh, tenía muchos muebles, uh, uh, sí, uh, mu muchas cajas, uh, sí. como guadas, sí, muchas cajas, uh, y uh, necesité un camión, uh, un camión enorme. Uh -huh. uh, Diego. Llego a los Estados Unidos con una cajeta. cajeta. Ah, wow. Ok. Sí. Bien. Ok. Bueno, algo más o siguiente. I'll do one. Uh, la danza más difícil es para mí. Para mí. Sí. Para mí. Cuando fue, uh, oh, o cuando me mudé a Los Ángeles. Ah. Y, uh, viví con una amiga en eh, la ciudad uh, dentro de Los Ángeles, uh, downtown. Los ¿En el Ángeles, centro? En el centro de Los Ángeles. Y tuvimos un apartamento que no pudimos ver el sol. Oh, uh, oh, oh, oh. Y, y vivimos muy cerca de un hotel que se llama Rainbow Hotel. Ah. Y es peligroso, ¿no? Ah. Pero, o sea, ah. <risa> oh, sí. Bueno, sí. Me, me recuerda al tiempo. Una vez, sí, uh, viví Viví un año, solamente un año, viví un año en, en un apartamento que, que se llama a, a, apartamento de patio, patio apartment, mala idea, mala idea, porque sí, uh, era, un, uh, era un apartamento uh, casi como vivir en un sótano, Tenía, yo tenía una ventana, pero una ventana como de, de tamaño así, ¿bien? Sí, una ventana así y, y podía ver los zapatos de las personas <risa> caminando, sí, en la acera fuera del apartamento y, y ch, ah, no, me, mm, no me gustaba para nada. I did not like that at all. Ok. Bueno, pero la mudanza fue fácil, pero vivir en, en ese, ese apartamento, sí, fue un desastre. Ah, bueno, ok. Ah, eh, ah, ¿Qué ciudad, qué ciudad te gustaba más de todas las residencias? Which city did you like the most out of all your places you resided? ¿Qué ciudad te gustaba más? 
me gustaba más uh, de toda la ciudad de South Burlington, Vermont. I, it, it, if I were to say it, would I say Burlington Sud or Sud? How would you say South Burlington in Spanish? South Just Burlington. leave it at South Burlington. Yeah. Eso sí. Eso sí. Yeah. En inglés. Mm -hmm. En inglés, sí. Uh, again, you'll get a, a video uh, this coming week where you'll hear mm -hmm. some cities referenced. And some, she says, with a Spanish turn. And some, she leaves as the English word. And the, depende. It really does change from one situation. You'll see it kind of changes with, you know. Uh, no real signal of, well, here's where I'm going to use a Spanish word and here I use the English word. No, es así. Uh, sí. A mí me gustaba más, me gustaba más, a de todas las ciudades me gustaba más Chicago. Porque, mm -hmm. porque tenía como 20, 22, 24, 25 años y uh, siempre a uh, Uh, siempre había actividades por todas partes de la ciudad, ¿sí? Para una mujer joven. Entonces, me gustaba Chicago más. Uh, en el invierno, ah, no tanto, pero... <risa> bueno. Uh, ¿Qué ciudad te gustaba más? ¿Alguien más? ¿Anybody else? I can say something. May I go ahead? Sí, can sí. I Can I say me gusto vivir? Like I liked me gustaba vivir. I liked living. Gustaba. Okay. In Denver, porque había muchas cosas que hacer en la ciudad. And this is where I'm stuck. As well as, and when I looked that up, they said, así como. I want to say I like doing all the things in the city. Así como disfrutar de las montanas. So what, what word should I use? I like uh, stuff in the city as well as the mountains. Oh. I didn't know what term, so. Uh, sí, 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 entiendo. Uh, me gustaba, uh, me gustaba, uh, me gustaban las actividades uh, de la ciudad. Sí. Tanto como. Tanto. Uh, okay. Ah. Las de uh, las, perdón, momentito, estoy navegando, sí, esto, sí, uh, como las actividades uh, al aire libre, outdoors, mm. tanto como, as much as. Okay. Meaning, I liked this kind of thing, but then there's an opposite thing, yeah? Tanto como, as much, as well, as well as, this is really saying as much as, but it's what you're commonly going to hear more. Tanto como, as much as doing that other thing, okay. as well as. That's true. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Uh, or, or you can add in, uh, y también, and also. So you have a couple of options, really, of like a common way to phrase that. Okay? Está bien. Okay. Alguien más. ¿Qué ciudad te gustaba más? Um, la ciudad que me, que me, la ciudad que me gustaba más de todas las residencias fue Honolulu porque todo fue extranjero y nuevo mi enorme de la cultura asia 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 asiáticos is that right asia uh, uh, asiáticos sí de la gente asiática de uh, la cultura la cultura de la gente asiática So La I've cultura. got to throw in uh, people in front of um, Asian culture. Oh, I see. Sí, de la, la cultura de la gente asiática, sí. Okay. Sí. Yeah. Bueno, sí. Because you're talking about that 
that group of people that live there, right? Right. And, yeah. and well, the culture itself, which you would include the people, but it's, you know, it's the food, it's the architecture, it's the... It's sí. The, la, cul la cultura asiática está bien. También, oh, okay. sí. Sí, sí. Okay. Sí, funciona. It works, sí. Bien. Excelente, sí. Uh, es una cultura muy exótica, ¿no? Sí. Muy exótica. Excelente. Ah, uh, bueno, algo más de uh, ciudades. Uh, I have one. Uh, me gustaba vivir en Costa Mesa, California. Um, Costa Mesa está cerca de playa, pero Costa Mesa más barato que Newport Beach. Ah, es más barato vivir en Costa Mesa que en Newport Beach. Sí, sí. Bien. Y Newport Beach también está muy cerca del mar, ¿no? Um, Sí, sí, sí. Um, Newport Beach está la playa de mar. Oh, está en la playa. Ah, sí. Um, Costa Mesa, um, poquito um, oeste, oeste. Está, oeste. está al oeste. Está uh, al oeste de Newport. Ah, sí. bien, entiendo. Sí, bien. Vale. Bueno, algo más. Uh, a mí me gustaba más um, la ciudad, una ciudad que se llama Tirago. Y esta ciudad está cerca de Sydney, en Australia. Uh, uh. Y a mí me gustaba esta ciudad um, porque... Podría andar cada día a la playa con mi bebé. Ah, excelente, excelente. Sí, vivir en la playa. Uh, qué sueño. What a dream, qué sueño, ¿verdad? Ah, creo que um, muchas veces um, a mí me gustaba, sí, a mí me gustaba algo más cuando era joven y ahora no importa tanto. Por ejemplo, um, cuando era joven, cuando era una mujer de 20 años, 30 años, sí, uh, uh, me importaba, it was really important, me importaba mucho vivir cerca de un centro grande con uh, muchos restaurantes, con uh, uh, bares, con música, sí, y, y uh, me importaba mucho. It was really important to me. Me importaba mucho a la edad de 25 años. Ahora no me importa tanto, sí. No tengo que bailar cada fin de semana <risa> eh, y así que ahora mm, no me importa. Pero cuando era uh, una joven de 25, sí. Uh, sí, las cosas cambian. La vida cambia. La vida cambia. Life changes, ¿no? Exacto, sí. Uh, eso sí. sí. Bien, eso es. Otro. Ok. Uh, bien. Uh, bueno. Um, adelante un poquito. Uh, hiciste... Uh, las cajas, perdón, las cajas, uh, ti mismo o ti misma, o contrataste, or did you hire it out? Sí, uh, a una empresa. Durante, durante una mudanza, sí, hiciste las cajas tú mismo o tú misma? O contrataste, or did you hire out a moving company? Una empresa de mudanzas. Uh, en cada caso, excepto uno, uh, contrato una expresa de uh, mudanza. La excepción fue 
mi primera mudanza cuando tuve menos posesiones, ah. más, fu más fuerza personal y menos dinero. Ah, <risa> sí, eso es, sí. Uh, personalmente, personalmente, no contraté ni una vez, ni una vez a una empresa uh. uh, de mudanzas, ¿sí? Uh, muchas veces uh, les, uh, muchas veces me mudé con la ayuda de algunos amigos, uh. ¿sí? Uh -huh. uh, y, por ejemplo, uh, muchas veces... Uh, yo o, les ofrecía una cena especial, mucha cerveza para ayudarme a, a llevar las cajas, a llevar las cajas, sí, y mudarme, sí. A uh, ustedes, alguien más o no? Um. Cuando era ni niña, mis familia nos mudaron a California. Mi papá compró un pequeño trailer para nuestras cosas. No, ah. con no contra contratamos a una empresa de mudanza. Sí, sí. Ah, muchas veces ah, un empleo, un empleo ah, ofrece como beneficio, sí, sí ah, la ayuda de una empresa de mudanzas. Pero hay, hay que ser una compañía bastante grande para ofrecer una empresa de mudanzas, ¿verdad? Sí. Uh, y, y cuesta. A veces vale la pena, a veces vale la pena mucho, sí. Uh, es menos trabajo, pero sí. Ok. Uh, ¿Usas o usaste a uh, un uh, trastero para guardar varias cosas? Sí, uh, do you use now or did you use a storage room? Storage facility is trastero. Sí. Uh, use use of uh, un trastero uh, de uh, casa. Uh, no, use un trastero de mi casa, de mi, oh, how, do, no, where, how do I say, I, I use my sister-in-law's house. Uh, <laughs> uso, uso el casa de mi nuera uh, uh, para guardar varias cosas y um, uh, cada tiempo uh, vuelvo a Chicago uh, I would take a uh, puse a dos cajetas conmigo in Southwest Airlines. Uh -huh. Y uh, poco por poco um, uh, me uh, mudo al Phoenix. Yeah, sí. Yo usé un trastero aquí en Phoenix como para... Yeah. para... Uh, tres años y después de comprar una casa bastante grande, entonces no necesitaba un trastero. Ya no necesitaba un trastero porque tenía una casa con, con armarios y un garaje y sí, pero cuando, cuando vivía, cuando vivía en un apartamento, entonces sí, uh, sí, usé un trastero como tres o, o cuatro años. 
uh, y cuesta, cuesta bastante, ¿no? Cuesta bastante. Uh, bueno, ok. Uh, uh, está, mm, uy, ya, ya son las uh, uh, siete y media. Uh, we are going to take our last two questions off of that list and I'll uh, embed those into the um, um, uh, recap. Sí, bien. Um, we're going to have some completely uh different stuff to talk about you're going to get kind of a longish video and i'm i'm pondering i may do a vocabulary list because i know that's always helpful um i want to continue with you guys doing some practicing about talking about the past and we're going to do some little impromptu practice using some pictures uh this is going to be a longish video but it's definitely just a storytelling type video uh about um and, and initially i thought it was going to just be a 20 year old thing you know the instagram accounts yeah i don't do that i i should probably be ashamed but yeah no. <laughs> nah. okay uh agustina tiene tiene y es un video bastante largo it's kind of a long video Kind of a long video, um, but she's going to talk about like the story behind all the pictures she posted. And you know how people pi post pictures every, ooh, la vida es perfecta. Life is perfect. This is why Instagram is a problem. Sí, y es, es porque, sí, Instagram es un problema. Sí, hay muchas fotos, es interesante, pero el problema es que la... Uh, por medio de las fotos, uh, pensamos que todo es perfecto. ¡Uh! Mira esta foto. Una playa hermosa. Todo es muy hermoso. Todo, todo es muy perfecto. Pero no lo es en la realidad, right? In reality, sí, sí. it's not what it looks like. No, no yeah. es lo que parece. It's not what it seems. No es lo que parece. Uh, so it's kind of a long video that talks about what is behind these seemingly pretty pictures. Yeah. Uh, but I want you to notice how she flips back and forth between uh, that pretérito imperfecto, pretérito imperfecto, that. And um, in particular, uh, I want you to think about four little words that I'm going to put up on the screen. And don't let them flummox you because... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. A ver. Cuatro palabras. Four words. Uh She's going to use a lot of uh, imperfecto pretérito, mix them all up, and she's going to be talking about like specific times and what she was doing, okay? But I want you to be thinking about these four words, and you haven't seen them yet. Fue versus era, again, and uh, estuvo versus estaba. I want you to think about those. And those are the four little words that cause us trouble because we got enough problems as it is with just these two, ser and estar, right? And now when they go into the past, we've got cuatro palabras, was. All four of those words mean was, okay? So I want you to be thinking about when she describes things in the past, is she saying, an event was a certain way, or is she describing? Okay. And if she's talking about a star, because a star talks about location or uh, feelings. feelings or health, which are very changeable, it might be a estuvo if she pegs it in time. Uh, if she pegs it to a specific time. But more likely than not, it's going to be just description, which means it's going to be more likely than not, more frequently, let us say, estaba as a description. Okay. 
because for how you feel. Oh, and also for location, honestly, you do not hear people using uh, estuvo. Uh, you do not hear using people using estuvo to talk about location, right? Description and location will be estada. So I want you to kind of ponder that, uh, kind of flesh that out in a little bit of slide, okay? Although she's going to use a lot of other verbs too. See? Está bien. Sí. Yeah. sí and it's a longish bien. video. It's a, it's a long one. So uh, I'm not going to give you any other. I will give you a slide set to go with it. And that video es bastante. Es suficiente. That's enough. See? Bien? Bien? Gracias. Bien. Muchas gracias. And de nada, de nada. Sí, fue un placer. Ok, vale, entonces, uh, todavía sí, las experiencias.